What's going on, everybody? So, I ended up trying to go to a show up in Louisville today. Um, when I went up in there, you guys will see, because uh, I started doing a little bit different stuff with the cameras. You'll hear a little bit of me talking, um, walking in and stuff. Didn't see much cars in the parking lot. I figured, well, maybe I'm just parked in the wrong area, you know. Walked inside. Well, you guys will get to see that part. Um, there wasn't much to do a video there, we'll just say with. Um, I think I got like maybe a table's worth. Uh, a lot of the stuff was, you know, one dealer's guy runs the show. He had uh, all the same stuff. And then, I mean, it was like one thing of Funko Pops uh, stand for church food. And yeah. So I heard there was a show. It was at the Austin Flea Market in Shepherdsville. And I knew it was on my way home. Figured, what the heck? I'll stop. Maybe I get some footage there. Again, you guys will probably see a little bit of me walking in. It was not very big. Had about the same amount of dealers at this show. Uh, but there was a little more inventory. Uh, was the whole lot of tape there, so I just combined everything together. Did pick up some pickups. So um, I'm going to go ahead and play those videos for you. Uh, you'll hear me in the background talking as I'm walking in and out of places. And then the actual video of the displays, you guys get the music uh, over piece on to it. But I'll be back in about a minute, and I'll show you what I picked up. All right, guys. So, yeah, like I said, it wasn't a whole lot to it. I mean, good bit of driving today. Uh, I got stuck in some traffic. But, you know, it's what you chance going to these shows. You never know what's going to be there. Could be a good show, a new dealer come in with a lot of new inventory. Never, ever know. So, I know there's another show next week. Same guy from Louisville's host another show at the other place. He told me he has like 70 tables full. We'll see when I get up there. Uh, hopefully it's somewhere close to that. Maybe pick some stuff up, 
get another video done. But I did do some pickups. If you guys listed on overtime last night, I'm kind of staying away from a lot of the newer stuff. It doesn't make sense in the boxes to buy because, they, you know, $900,000 for boxes of, uh, what is that, Mosaic Basketball. I mean, unless you hit crazy and grade out, you might get, you might not even come close to getting half your money back. So I've been picking up vintage on the side, not to show you guys. Normally I don't show a lot of my stuff, but I did pick up some stuff here. Uh, 70, I just lost it here. Yeah, 70, 70 tops, Joe Namath. I mean, these were in like a bargain bin box. And I took a stab at, I mean, will I grade them one day? Yes. Are they going to be worth a fortune? No, but I mean, it's just stuff like this. It's really cool. It's, you know, considered vintage, you know, whether they get twos, two and a half, threes, fives, I don't know, but I figured, you know, I'll have some stuff in case, uh, you know, I want to grade some vintage same year, 70 tops, Sayers. Pretty nice looking. Bob Greasy. Little YA Tittle. I don't know how many people remember that. And then one more. I believe this was 71. Yeah, 71 tops. Real hard because of the uh, borders on this with the whiting. But, you know, like I said, if it comes back at 3, 4, 5, whatever it may be, I'm happy because it's vintage. Uh, stuff's hard to find in really good shape unless you can find somebody that's, you know, selling packs or boxes at a crazy price and you do well out of it. Uh, overall happy. I mean, what I paid for this was probably like 20% of a top series two box. And yet I got, you know, hall of famers and stuff into here and, you know, it's a little bit easier to collect than buying a box of, you know, crazy price newer stuff, getting nothing, having to worry about grading out on it, and, you know, taking that huge chunk of a loss on to it. But pretty cool stuff overall. But all right, everybody, you guys had to take care. I'll have another show next weekend, and then I don't think they start back up until maybe January time frame. So... I'll take a look around. I mean, I like going to shows and being able to talk to people and stuff like that. But when you have like under 10 dealers um, and, you know, some of the tables are just the same thing to where it's look at all the retail I bought. and I'm trying to sell the singles. It just I, I'm just not into it at all. I mean, other people might be. But to me, it just to me, it screams boredom. And I mean, I like to go to a show and things catch my attention, conversation, whatever. But. You know, I was watching the guys buying like Lamello base optic rookies and Don Russ rookies, and I'm like, guys, that's going to be so overpopulated. I, I don't see the point behind it. And, you know, I think the one guy sold a, I think, I can't remember if it was a Don Russ or an optic. It, it probably had to be optic for 20 bucks. I mean, literally, add, add a couple dollars to it, and that's what I paid for all of these right here. So I don't know. A just different approach that I'm doing this year. Like I said, every year I look at doing something different with my own stuff. And I think this year's going to be more going back into the older stuff. Um, because the, the price of the new stuff is just dramatic. And I mean, unless you pull the big stuff to grade out and make a profit, it, it's going to hurt your book or your pocket, you know, pocketbook, wallet, whatever you want to say. But all right, guys, take care. Appreciate you guys watching the video and the support. And I will catch you next video.